facts are going through the motions, where justice is served with a twist of drama and a dash of intrigue. In this high-stakes arena, where truth and lies collide, we follow the riveting cases, the impassioned arguments, and the relentless pursuit of justice. Join retired Special Agent Sean McDonough as he delves deep into the legal battleground, where every verdict has consequences, and every motion sets the stage for gripping tales of flaw and order. This is Going Through the Motions with Sean McDonough. <laughs> Is there that any evidence was planted? Are you serious? Whoa, how about that, guys? Everybody's a winner. You guys are a winner. Aiden's gonna be a winner. I'm gonna be a winner. That is the goal for tonight. Um, welcome everyone. It's 733 here in the East Coast from Naples. I'm welcoming everyone back to the show. How about the show with uh Joan? I thought it was uh, awesome. We got a little taste of how things are on the other side. Um, from her perspective, it's a shame that other people had to, uh, I mean, tarnish her reputation, but that's how it goes. I mean, we're going to have, we're not going to have transparent, we're not going to have uh, complete uh, cohesiveness with this emerging, ever, ne ever, never ending uh, size that we have here. So just real quick, I was really nodding off. And then I got on to Twitter tonight and I saw this thing with, holy camoli, angels waiting on angels. I said, what the hell is this? Jules, Haley, the angels lady. I was, it was riveting. And I forgot all of us. I forgot I had a show tonight. You know, Jules, you're obsessed. You're obsessed with me, I guess. I don't know. You said last night, you're going to, you're going to do a uh, foyer at DEA. There's nothing there. You're had, you're really had now. You would have been easy if I attacked you. Holy Christ. If I get a little undercover on you, Jules, it'd be all over. Anyways, be that as it may, um, listen, nine months ago, literally nine months ago, I had the pleasure of being invited on Aiden County shows. Back in June, I was just getting my feet wet, and um, Aiden brought me on. And it was the beginning uh, of, a, I thought, a great team and exciting uh, endeavor that everyone was getting involved in. It was it was right in the beginning. All the information was coming out. And um, anyways, we went a little sideways. We got it back. We went a little sideways. And anyways, so I, I just want to bring Aiden on right now. And I he's been a, a great mentor to me. Let's hold on. Hold on. He is the OG. He's got 10, 12, 13 years. He is the Doctor of Doctor of Dialogue. I love that he's the Doctor of Dialogue. That was incredible. He is the Doctor. He's the Daddy. He's the Turtle. And let me bring him on to the stage right now. Aiden, there you are, my friend. Thanks for having me, Sean. How you doing? How you doing? Good. That it's intro is hilarious. Great. The no, intro I mean, of it at the end is the best. You know, um, like I said, I'm just getting my feet wet. I got two days into three weeks on this crap. You know. I can I if I can basically have my uh, the buttons right, it's a it's a good night, you know. So, um, anyways, how you doing tonight? 
I'm all right. How about yourself? Good. Uh, you know, I want to tell the, and you could say it yourself. We have not talked no. since we had a little conversation the other day, right? That's correct. Yeah. That's we correct. have nothing planned. Nothing uh, planned. Back, like, nothing planned is nothing planned. Basically, we had we had the little blow up on Twitter, and then you called me, and we talked for about 16 minutes, and we hashed it all out. And I thought it was a good conversation. And I said, why don't we just have this conversation, like, talk about what we just talked about on right. – the air so people can see everything's good and we can then we can talk about what really matters and that's sure the yeah. feds are and, stuff putting people in bracelets and I, I do want to apologize hey here's the bottom line i lost my cool i was not professional uh i was not professional to the audience i wasn't professional to my guest i wasn't professional for myself nor you all right and i just wanted to get out there but you know, well, like I apologize too for posting all that shit on Twitter. I I got pissed. The Fiorillo guy just pisses me off. I don't like that guy, but uh, that just set me off. And uh, you know, just there was a misunderstanding. I think when uh, you know, I I so I texted you the first. You were one of the first, not one of the first people I texted, but I did text you the right. first day out, and right. you thought that was you know unusual, right? But I I explained to you on the phone. I just want to put this out there why I texted Sean on that day because when I was in jail, right. People, I don't get internet in there. And so people would send me videos, like screen recordings of Twitter shit. And that's how I kept connected to the internet. I missed it a lot, right? right. And so people would send me those and they would always, this girl, Jennifer Hartford would send them and she would just send yours, like in the tweets. And it kept me entertained. I'm like, Sean's out there just slaying trolls, slaying them left and right and just holding down the fort. And so when I got out, I'm like, well, Sean's kind of been the de facto leader like while I was gone, so who, who? Of course, I'm going to message him. That's why I messaged you. Yeah, and like and and like we talked about, it was confusing for me because you know we kind of went our own ways under an understanding back in September, and and I and I was very upfront with you. Uh, the 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 Facebook pages were getting toxic for me personally. Yeah, yeah. And and we had discussed it, and I just said, Aiden, listen, at some point I'm breaking away, and I'm just going to. I'm just going to basically reevaluate what I want to do. And if you remember, the original group was honestly, it was a justice for Karen, for John, Karen, and mass corruption. And mm -hmm. I like that because I, I wanted to get into the corruption part. Because Aiden, honestly, in my, in, my, uh, in my heart, there is absolutely nothing worse than a corrupt police officer. Mm -hmm. and, Tell me about and, it. And, it, and it's personal to me. It really is. I, I detest detest corruption and and you are you are being in you are in the middle of corruption also i'm being arrested by him like i'm surrounded yeah. they threw me in jail these corrupt cops right i know but so, i used to trust the police right and so in if you can remember back in the beginning you know we were doing these little things and we was getting information out about you know what was brian doing what was this guy uh 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 Gouldy doing all it's trying to connect us that was kind of like i how i wanted it but then it kind of took a different turn. I said, "Listen, I can't do it. I can't deal with the drama. All the drama was in the back, on the back side of the channel." And I said, "That's it." So September, October, I decided to to basically leave. And I was very upset on October 11 when you got arrested. It did it did affect me, you know that that affected me because on the same day that turncoat Natalie texted me. You know what? She, we saw the text. I've seen we had a I conversation. We had a, her and I spoke and I just said to myself, God damn, if this woman who I had to hold her hand for four months went south, I mean, what else can happen? And she was like, she was like the, the well, she, we know the story. She was the middle. And so she was in the yeah. middle, right? But she didn't even have anything useful to offer that. They flew right. all the way to California to listen to her whine about how Karen doesn't right. want to be her friend. And she basically right. said, no, Karen actually is playing by the rules. She's not violating no. any. That, exactly. that whole trip was the biggest waste of time I've ever seen. Yeah. I don't know what they're. I mean, as an investigator, maybe they need to. They need to do a face to face. I get it, but anyway. So I went on my way, and you went on your way, and I was doing this, doing that, and then you. Then all of a sudden, it's December, mm. and you're and you're locked up on December twenty. So I did send you a Christmas thing. You did Merry I Christmas, Christmas yeah, I did. right? Yeah. And then you responded back, and then you were gone. Listen, it was, yeah. Listen, it was and listen. I did. You know, did fact, you know I was a? Did you know I was a fugitive when you sent me that text? On yeah, I, uh, okay, I, I, heard, okay. I, yeah, yeah, I right. heard. I heard. I heard. I heard you're a fugitive. Yeah. You know. I, listen. 
I was it's a, a small, it, it's yeah. a very small world. It is. Yeah. And like I said, uh, I did, I was disturbed by the whole thing. And, but you know, um, what, what caused me to erupt was, and I, we've talked about it. The part that confused me was you wanted me on, but the, you know, the needling, the needling, the needling, it just, it just kind of got, and it got into my head and, and my reaction truly wasn't about, you know, um, uh, wasn't about you per se. My reaction was like a cover, right? When I said I didn't trust your devices, it was the fact that I don't know what I could, like I said, I got two, at that time, I probably had a week and a half, two weeks into this. I didn't know what I could offer you, right? And and then uh, I didn't understand why um, I was being not attacked, but questioned about the people I had on my show. Like, you know, poor Eldon. Now, Eldon, what I want to say, and you need to understand this. Way back before they ever contacted you or Kevin or Mike Crawford, they were contacting me forever, forever. Eldon on one side, Nick and uh, Dan uh, Duquette on the other side. And I had a relationship. And I said, guys, I don't have a platform. I There's nothing I can do for you guys. There's nothing I can do. I said, try Aiden, try Mike, try Kevin. I guess they did, right? They did. They tried all of us. Yeah, I saw them. I saw <laughs> At least them. Nick did. I don't, I don't know about. Oh, no, right. Eldon did too. It's like, yeah. I know you so, like that guy. He's a, he's a bit much for me. I, okay. So, uh, real quick about Eldon. All right, so, as you probably realize, I took a big step, a big risk of putting him on my show because I know the agents that arrested him. I know them personally. And I did vet all his information. I, I, I had all his, uh, they call them DEA sixes. These are report of uh, investigations, like a, a, an FBI 302. Same thing. I saw the transcripts of his, um, of his grand jury, of his, of his uh, trial testimony. And um, what's his name? Uh, Kevin Reddington was in the corruption group. He came in and I said, yeah. Kevin, listen, I'm having Eldon on. I did promise the poor guy. Would you like to e at least make a statement or come on the show? And Kevin, listen, I know Kevin. I mean, we worked tangently some cases. I worked a case with Tony Cardinale. I was undercover. Tony called me, said, Sean, don't say a word. We'll get you covered. I mean, this is the type of stuff that I dealt with. I get his his whole thing. He basically said, that's it, Sean. We're not going to, we're not going to, uh, I'm not going to give a statement. The guy's batshit crazy. And like I said, he backed away. But I put him on, and um, I believe he has some. My but big thing with him is, like, it happened 12 years ago, and he's like, I can't get a job. It's like, dude, get a job. Get, you got to get, get over. You got to move on with your life, buddy. Like, it's true, all he true. talks about. It's And I would – when people message me with story ideas, it's like, you got to keep it brief. Right. That dude writes books, like, and it's, like, in all caps. I'm like, I'm not reading all that, man. I, I don't have time for this. Like, you got to sum it up, but. Whatever. It, it, it was like, uh, I, I don't know. I just wanted to talk to you, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. I like it. Like I, and I'm like I, was like, I was almost like not hurt, but like, what the fuck? Why won't this dude talk to me? So I'm glad I you know. called. Well, you know? yeah. And um, if your attention was to get my attention, it you worked. definitely got my attention. It worked. It worked. So so here was the big confusion, Aiden. And this is why I said, oh, my God. So when I guess when I had Dan Duquette on. Now, listen, you got Dan, you got Nick, right? Dan is very, um, I would say, very credible. I mean, you're a sports guy. You know how important he was in the sports world, right? Yeah, did he, he trade uh, Heathcliff Slocum for Derek Lowe and Jason Veritek? Was he the GM? That they he also had? brought over Pedro Martinez Oh, yeah. way back in the day, right. But he was also the guy that blew the whistle on steroids, on the steroid capers with uh, – How do you know him? How do you know Dan Duquette? I <laughs> I know Dan through Nikki. I this is oh, this thing. What I'm God. trying to say is oh. they both they both contacted me. Dan and Dan okay. and Nikki are hand in hand. They're like this. Where one goes the other. And this is what I'm trying to say. Now listen. Listen. Here's the shirt. Do you believe this? <laughs> I did like <laughs> You know, I got these shotisms. But so I talked to Dan, and Dan is like down to earth. You talk to Nikki, it's like, whoa, holy shit. He's like me on steroids. He's all over the place. Deep down, when he was talking about certain things, I said, wait a minute. Let's let's sift through all this stuff. There's something here. And when I did talk to Dan, okay, this is where, okay, 
this is where I got very confused in this whole thing. I just want to be completely honest with you. When I, I think you call them lunatics, I don't know. If the, they, they are represented by Tim Bradle. Who? Those guys. Nick Fiorillo? Yes. He's not represented and, by and Tim. He's not represented by Tim. Last week they said? had a conversation. Tim was going to walk him into Brockton last week. This is what confused me. No, it goes back. The day after you went to jail, they negotiated a, a, a payment fee. Uh, what do you call it? A representation fee on the 27th he doesn't of December. Represent. I'm going to talk to him about that. He never mentioned that to me. I'll talk to him. I'm going to see what he says. But regardless, got, the, the dude just he I, he's nuts. I like he's he's message like his whole lawsuit. He's know. suing like Brian Albert and, and Whitey Bulger. It's just too much. It's too much. I think it's a distract because like I think the Karen Reed case is so important and it's no, it is the facts are on our side. And I think the more we associate with people like that who are out there out to lunch, it just makes us all look. Like work, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, right? No, I I'm, a, I'm a serious guy. Like I'm serious about this case. And Karen Reed is 1,000 percent innocent. And I just Absolutely. don't want to align with people who uh, kind of like make us all seem like a bunch right. of conspiracy but, nutbags. But you got to understand my position, right? That would that really confused me because um, they sent me the representation letter. So uh, last week, the conversation between Tim, Dan, I talked to Dan about this. The big thing is about Nikki going in on this, I guess, this charge of where he, def uh, Carl Dougal did this little thing where it was actually Nikki and his wife got assaulted. Anyway, make a long story short, Tim was going to walk him into Brockton last week, literally last week. And and that's what I'm saying. I'm saying Aiden has to know this because and it, that's, that's just confused me. So I'm just saying, if I'm an idiot, then, then, Aiden can't be calling his own attorney an idiot. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm just saying. I'm so, ask, you mind if I asked him, do you, does he represent Nick Fiorello? Can I ask, ask him, him that? Ask him, okay. did he have negotiations with him? Ask him, did he have a fee for $100,000? Okay. All right. That all was right. the, that was a negotiated fee. All right. I'll ask him. See what he says. Uh, I feel like you would have told me. Like, usually he tells he, he's he's represent, he's represent, represented another guy named Tony Raymond who's in a similar situation where I am. And so right. he usually like tells me when he's got a client that is somewhat related to mine, but right. I've never heard him mention Nick right. Fiorillo, but we'll see. Yeah, so you know, so this whole bullshit, right? I get a thing from Dan today, and they see he said, Sean, this is real. This is real. We have this, and he sent me this uh form that back on 12 27, 2023. A rep, uh, what do you call? I don't know what the hell the term. It's something from Tim to those guys, and it was an agreement for representation, uh, some kind of fee. So, like I said, that, that just I said, okay, there's something. There's a disconnect some somewhere, and I just like I said, I lost my cool, and I was wrong. I was wrong. So, but that I don't know. You might want to check that out. I'll check it out. And again, I saw, I apologize for making that post. I took them all down. Uh, Cause yeah, I'm not, right. we need to be united. That's the big thing here. Is That's like, this true. Is, That's true. And, and it's like, I think a big role that you play in all this is that your background experience. Like when I had you on the show, I thought the most interesting thing that you talked about was just like the things that law enforcement didn't do right. and should have done go inside right. the house. Right. Like ask around, like ask Brian, right. Hey, you know, we got to search the house. It's like little shit like that, that like I wouldn't know because I don't have, a background in law enforcement that I found interesting right. and insightful. Right. So, right. uh, you know, and, and like I said, you, you slay the trolls on there and I like your optimism. Like, that's one thing like I love, like, cause I get down with this shit. Sometimes I'm like, I need this shit to end. I'm sick of like how long this is taken. I want the bad guys to get arrested. And sometimes it seems like, like I'm still confident it's going to happen, but it's just like Jen McCabe's arrogance and her cockiness when she walks into court, right. it just bothers me. Because I'm like, she really thinks it's like she knows something. Like she, I don't. What do you think? Do you think she's just? Do you think she believes she's not going to go down for this? I'll tell you right now. In in my experience, in my experience, people like that are going to hold on to everything they can. They're going to say, "You guys are crazy. You guys are." Crazy. They have to keep up an image. They know exactly what they did. You heard. I don't know if you heard Joan the other night. Yeah, she, was she good. herself said. The way she described John, and she knew John. They both knew John, and but 
uh, Jen had a longer because uh, Joan had left. No woman would ever talk about a person that cold on calling her calling her friend a man in the snow. It it, mm -hmm. it doesn't it right. doesn't happen that way. Right. And yes, she is she is definitely a psych psychopath. Do you she think she's shitting? Do you think she's that. shitting? Do you think Jen McCabe is like shitting her pants? Like real talk? Like, do you think she she's knows, actually worried about this? Okay, she knows the questions that were asked her of her in the grand jury. Now, you know, I'm I'm gonna mention him. Kevin says at first, at first, Kevin said, Oh, oh, the grand jury, it was a softball grand jury. They were just bringing them in for mm -hmm. uh, questions about policy, investigative policy. Did the state police do the right thing? Did can police no, it wasn't. This was a confrontational, balls on balls, investigative grand jury. No doubt about it. The federal, the when federal you, one. Yes, when you bring Brian Albin in two times, and then the other thing was was a huge uh, thing for me. Brian Higgins met with the yes. U.S. attorneys. Yep. Met with the U.S. attorneys before he went in, and he lied. They had mm -hmm. to counsel him. They had to discipline him with the records. This was not a softball. Grand did you hear what, did you did you hear what month they called in Higgins by the way? I found that interesting. April. June ap, June, no, right? It, it, no, April. So that means oh. they said that there were three people that got subpoenaed in April. Now we know who they are. It was uh Higgins, Colin Albert and right. Jennifer McCabe. Those the were truth the truth is they all got they all got brought in. Everyone that was identified. Any everyone that was that predates me even writing about, about this. So right. like that pre like so they've been all do you, do you think the feds know, in my opinion, I think they do. Do you think the feds know who killed John O'Keefe? Absolutely. So why, aren't they arrested, why are they letting him walk free? They don't have to. They don't have. Okay, and let's put to bed this bullshit about target letters, all right? All right, so Aiden, I'll give you a classic example. A classic example, all right? I'm going to target Nick Fiorello, right? So I have to go. I'm, I'm a regular desk guy, and I get information from somebody. And I get it. It's all corroborated. I interview the person, blah, blah, blah. So I, I do a, a, a basis of investigation, a case initiation, right? And it's based on five different things. And the targets of the investigation initially are mentioned. They're named. And, the, and at the end is the targets of investigation is uh, uh, Nick Fiorello, Dan Duquette, Sean McDonough, Aiden Carney, and Dr. Licker. Okay? Guess what? In two years, things change, right? So if I don't bring in Nick Fiorello, right, right, I don't have to give anyone a target letter. If my target is Nick Fiorello and I bring him into the grand jury, the United States U.S. attorney has to give him a target letter, has to say, you are a target of this investigation. So let's make believe the FBI, when they initiated this case, we don't know because we don't have, we don't have the records, but make believe it was done on Somebody, somebody other than the principals in John O'Keefe's case, okay? I personally believe it was done. Their case was all about public corruption, and they had different, they had different targets, okay? And because of this case, because of the information they were getting via human sources or, or signal sources like wiretaps or, or recordings that they're getting from confidential sources, I believe that they found out exactly how Karen was framed. Now, the flip end of that is, Karen did not go to them. Yanetti and Jackson did not go to them. You know they what did. they, you know what happened? The Thebes went to them. The federal oh, authorities oh. went. The, we went, to been, who? went to who? The federal authorities went to Karen and her team. You think so? I'm gonna tell you why. She's a victim. So. Why? I, they, I, th I assume because if you were in her position and you're watching all this corruption, you know, you're watching. The she didn't know. She didn't know. She didn't oh, know. They, they knew by December. They knew by, by December. From who? From who? Because they're looking like out, after they, they Alan knew Jackson. March. Her, they knew in March of 2022. Right. So they knew. Right. So they knew some. Yeah, they, you know how they knew? So they knew because. Call? So who, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters? No, you're going to call. If, if your local district attorney's office and your state police are corrupt, you're going right. to call the FBI. I think it's right. much more likely. And that's fine because I'm so sick of people saying that, oh, yeah. they, they contacted. They're the ones that told the FBI. Yeah, they fucking should. You're supposed well, to tell the FBI when you see corruption. That's yeah. what you do. My, my thing is this, and I gave this many times. If I'm on a wiretap and I hear that, uh, I hear that Cody Howell is going to get assassinated, 
Cody Hall right there. If, if I hear Cody Hall is getting assassinated and he's one of the guys in my in my case, by law, I have by I have to go to Cody Hall and say, listen, I'm coming out to you. I'm taking a chance, but we have to, we have, we have an obligation. We have an ethical obligation to advise you that you are, are targeted for an assassination. Now you can do what you want to do, Cody. You're a tough guy, blah, blah, blah. But I, as an agent, I have to tell you this. Okay. I, okay. Whether it's, they went to them or she, I believe they went to, I believe that they in fact went to Karen and company based on the fact that they knew this information exists. They knew that her civil rights were being violated because I believe they had a very active investigation and they, and that's it. Who, who will be right at the end? Who knows? But I can guarantee you right now, they know it all. Right. And this, so, then this, why is, so why is Jim McCabe walking into court smiling then? She has to. Why do all, she, why she did John, she could stay home, she could stay home like but here, here's Adam the does. classic, here's the classic. Why did John Gotti walk in and out of court all those times laughing? She's Mr. no John Dapper. Gotti. She's no right. John Gotti. But she's not. But these are what these psychopaths do. They convince themselves, right? Mm. And they're going to say, hey, if you have the evidence, fine. They know what they did. They know exactly what they did. All right. Here's one more thing I got to tell you. All right. Let's put this to bed. And this goes right into Kevin's throw. All right. All right. It's okay for the for Kevin to say, well, the FBI didn't say that they were targets, right? The FBI didn't didn't say they were targets and they're not coming. Well, guess what? If you believe the FBI said they weren't targets, then you got to believe that the car didn't hit John. You got to believe that 227 fucking happened because the FBI said that happened. So you either believe the FBI or you don't believe the FBI. You can't have it both ways. And guess what, Aiden? You were always right about that little fucking motherfucker. He was always two siding this, and he's still Who, doing it. Uh, Kevin? Kevin Lanahan, fucking oh, white. Yeah. That, that, that fool, that fraud. That Who fraud. He's a joke. You, can, Kevin seriously. He's a you joke. cannot say on one hand, oh, no targets. They're not coming. It's a bunch of sham. But on the other hand, right, say, oh, the, the FBI, hmm. they don't have the thing. This is the, this is the fallacy. You're either with the FBI or not. You can't pick, you can't mix and match. When I mean, you got a guy who has three PhDs and says, like we've always said, we've always said this. There was no damn way that John got hit by that car. Of course Absolutely not. no way. No way. It's we it doesn't make that. sense. And you right. know what they say now though, Sean? It's like I thought that I'm like, what are they going to say to that? All this shit that came out, the FBI Quantico specialist, the guy with three PhDs, they're all confirming yeah. what we all know. How are they going right. to spin this one? And how do they spin it? Well, it's the evidence. The defense is the one that gave them the evidence. Yeah. The defense isn't the one that gave them the fucking autopsy right. reports. The hospital is like the right. hospital, like right. the person who took the goddamn pictures is right. Like it's just, so, they're so, they don't believe this. Like nobody actually no. believes that Karen Reed did this. They're all just, they wake up. The, the difference between us and them is that they have to wake up every day and lie. Like they, that's right. all they do. They get up and they're like, how, yeah. what am I going to lie about today? Right. That's a horrible right. existence. I don't know anything exactly. about it because I get to wake up every day and tell the truth. And it's a good feeling. Right. And that's it. That, and you, myself, other people on this side have never, ever wavered from the truth. Look at this guy, Kevin. He's all over the place. And like, I got to give Will uh, a shout out. Will said it the other night, he's cushioning the fall. He is, Kevin is cushioned. He's back again. Well, listen, this guy is a fraud. I can, I, I confirmed it. He is part of the smear campaign that the McAlbert's led by, what's his name? Chrissy Albert. Chrissy yeah. Albert did this back in the fall. And listen, whether you people think he has a, he is very literate. He's a writer. But guess what he learned in college? journalism and how journalists smear people like that guy grant they know how to smear things they know how to twist things. kevin has twisted do you know that kevin and i i gave him all the photos that natalie gave about the taillight he mm -hmm. lied the other night again saying oh i never had my team check he's full of shit i know he is. Right? He's and he's saying that the video was was a i put a posted this video about the back of the car the back of the car was on because he kept that video there but he's still describing the gaping hole that never existed at 508. He's yeah. a liar. He's a liar. Yeah. He's going to get caught. He's going to pack his bags because we got him right by the cojones. 
How are any of these people ever like, it's just wild how these people will ever show their faces again. All these, there's no amnesty, like all these idiots hitching the train to this wagon. Like, I hope they understand that they will never, you, you backed cop killers and you can't say you didn't know it was all right there. And you're just ignored the evidence. And I always asked Kevin this back in the day. Um, I said, why don't you have Chris Albert on your show? How come none, all, all like you're, you're running, you're a real down the middle guy, right? Kevin, you want just the facts. Why don't you give Chris Albert a platform to come and explain to you why his family's innocent? Why doesn't he come up there? But he won't do it. I realized Kevin was a fraud the first time when he started talking. He was telling me that he was talking to Elizabeth Proctor and he's sending her messages and asking her questions. And then she just wouldn't answer the questions. And I'm like, don't you think that's suspicious, Kevin? Like you're asking good questions of her and she just doesn't have an answer for them. Why is that? And it's just like, because our side, we don't, Karen Reed doesn't back down from tough questions. She has no. answers to no. everything, everything. And obviously right. the cat's out of the bag now that I've spoken with Karen Reed. And what I always liked about Karen Reed was she brought receipts anytime. Right. Like she can't, there is nothing Karen Reed has ever told me that she cannot back up with receipts. Nothing. Right. Right. So, you know, what Kevin fails to understand is. I, I went to high school in Canton. My parents lived 53 years in Canton, right? I have connections back there. I've got connections right to DE. I've got a ledger on all the activities of Chrissy Albert, right? Everything. I do know he dangled the carrot. He said, Kevin, I will give you exclusive. I will come on your show. Kevin was drooling, was drooling. Now, I got to admit, all right? Um, he has been played severely by the other side, right? They have sent him all the bogus. What happened to the famous 95-page affidavit? He was hanging out along with all this other crap he said was going on. You know, he's a fraud. He Mm -hmm. And I hate saying this because he gives this little, like he's uh, like your favorite uncle. Oh, you know, oh, come over here, Karen, uh, wine and dine, uh, whatever her name is, wine and crime. Oh, Julie. Oh, that lady. I'm your little, oh. I'm your little uncle, you know, and you know, but he says to me, he says to me, I don't ask the hard questions. I vet every person. You think I didn't vet Joan, right? Do you know what he said about Joan? This is what he said about Joan. In the opening, he said that Joan, who lives in Virginia, who I've never met face to face to the other night on the screen like this, said that Joan was working for me, going through Canton and Norwood, taking pictures for me. He said that. That she was yeah. part of the my PR team, right? My PR team. I've sat my ass in, in Naples, right? I sit here in Naples and Aiden, listen, I did have sources. They're very close to me. And I couldn't I, I couldn't do shit, nothing without them. But the thing is, we how do we get this info? You know how you get your info and you know you know how to exploit it better than anyone. I just had a different a different way of doing it. I don't I don't have a journalism degree. I don't have a blog. I can't write Neither big articles, but I give a little zinger. I give tickles, you know, I give leads, I give this. The thing about Kevin is he's very smart and he's very good at what he does. The pro- well, I know, I know, but listen, he 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 is. The poor bass is dying. I hate that. Is he? I that's right. I do hate about I do hate is that. He, about. Is he dying though? Is he? Yeah, I, I think, know. yeah, okay. I think yeah. I think he is. Well, if okay. he isn't, then then shame on me. I don't know. I do feel for the bastard, but you know, listen, have a heart, have have some common sense here, Kevin. You're not making any sense at all. And he, he is. The glare said the other night, I loved it. He's cushioning his fall because he's two siding it again. He's speaking out this mouth, he's speaking out. He can't make it. He can't make a decision. Imagine going to him for a. Imagine him being a yes guy. He, is, he couldn't is he say back, yes anyway. Is he back on the Karen is innocent train. Is that well, what he's saying? I mean, yeah. he's he's not indicting her completely. You know, he mm-hmm. he he wants to say it's over, but then again, he gives wiggle rooms. He's given wiggle rooms, right? So, uh, you know, like I said, and so we we found out early on in back in October that all these people, Karen Kelly was my greatest source. And she told me all about how the McAlberts were gonna get a PR, an actual PR person, a public relations person, that were gonna do a big campaign, right? And they were gonna get a YouTuber. Well, they got Kevin, they got White, and listen, there was a big riff with the- uh, They crust, with crusty the, panties too, they got crusty panties. Yeah. That's all they you know, got, that's listen, in that corner. You know, 
and boundless and, millennia. You know, I, have, I have to admit, I, listen, I listen. I don't know all about. Uh, I have to admit, Krusty, there for her uh, hatred for you. She's probably, you know, probably not that uh, bad, right? Of a person, you tell me. Oh, you she's tell a me. horrible person. She's an absolute. Really? I mean, not yeah, because I don't, she, I don't even, she, not just because of me, because of what she's done okay. to her right. children. Like she lost two of them to the state for uh, the years you know, of abuse and neglect. Those are things she's horrible. Those are yeah. things I don't really know, but I, you know, oh, yeah. some of the things I've seen. I mean, she seems like when she okay, she was on Kevin's, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know anything about her, but she was very, uh, very uh, astute, very articulate. And you know yeah. what? The one thing she didn't do, she did, she did not indict Karen Reed. She oh, said, she has, but she has several times before. Yeah, but not live, yeah. not live. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like so, uh, if you see some of the shit she said and done, you know what I mean. She posted a picture when I was gone in jail of my, uh, you know, soon to be ex wife and my two kids, right on uh, on Christmas Eve, it did, and and posted, and she's like, he she sent this to me, and uh, she said that the kids are happier with their dad in jail and hopes he never returns again. It's like what an, yeah. a dark fucking disgusting person to do so. And by the way, she but of course did. Isn't, isn't that from? Isn't that from? you know, from prior battles and stuff. There's like no that. battle. Like it's, it's a one-sided thing. Like I don't okay. want any, I didn't, Sean, she, she, she got involved in this story because of me. She had no interest right. in the story. If I said right. that Karen Reed was guilty, she would say that Karen Reed's innocent. She's only right. doing this because she just is, follows me around wherever I go. Right. I don't want anything to do with her. That's why I got a restraining order on right. her now, finally. And by the way, she's being charged with felony witness intimidation. So uh, like she get, <laughs> she got charged with that last week. Getting, so there's that. It's really, it's really getting sick out there. It really is. It, I mean, yeah. I mean, I think, I think the justice system in the beginning, you know, they really, they abused the justice. In your case, they really abused it. I mean, and then with the Canton nine or now the eight, I mean, come on, they're hanging them up, you know, dangling up. That poor Mike Braff and, and everyone else, Jen and Nick, the whole nine. It's hard. These guys have a felony charge hanging over their head. That's that's serious stuff. But I mean, give them an answer, you know? Give Since them an answer. January 4th, they have their hearing and they still have not decided whether or not they have probable cause, which means they're just full of shit and they're waiting to see what happens in my case and Karen Reed's case. And by the way, Janelle Webb, uh, you know, the one who also got yeah, dragged into my show. Sure. Right. Hasn't ha hasn't been arraigned yet. She was indicted three months ago. They still haven't yeah. done the arraignment. It's like fucking a joke yeah. with these people. And by yeah. the way, my charges, like I'm not, the, I'm not for a guy facing 19 felonies. I don't lose any sleep over. I don't think about it. I'll never go right. to jail again for the rest of my life. And I know that right. I know that these charges are either going to be dropped or we are going to get the law overturned or we're going to go to trial and I'm going to fucking wipe the floor with all these assholes. Right. And we're going to get right. Michael Proctor on the stand. You should have seen the lies that these people have told to get me indicted in the first place. Cause I can't talk about it and I can't show it, but there are grand jury docs like the, the lies that they told and we're going to be able to use these. And we're going to be able to now, now that we've heard things that have happened in the Karen Reed case that it came out at that hearing about the feds, we have grand jury docs and we're like, Oh, they lied about this. They lied about this. They lied about this. And we got them. We got them now. Right. These fucking liars. Yeah. Everybody right. on their side is a liar. Yeah. It's um, it, it's amazing what this, this has dwarfed into it really has i mean we've gone from you know a person who has been falsely charged now to multiple other charges being lodged against you the canton uh nine uh other people it, it's crazy and you know in age they're not they're not going to stop they're not going to stop no why would they they got a taste for careful. it i was Just the test careful. case i was the test case like right. what i was doing outside like when I did that protest in Canton on July 22nd, they let it happen. They knew we were coming. They let me yeah. keep going to Chris Albert's pizza place and protesting. The cops came and they just let me stay. All of a sudden in October, they're like, now it's illegal. Now we found a loophole, which we're going to exploit this law. And other people, the Canton 9 tested it out and they got charged, right? And now right. that's the chilling effect. People don't want to express their First Amendment rights because yeah. they're afraid. And that's the whole purpose of this. And right. I just, it needs to end. Like this shit, like yeah, Brian told it. Who who's getting arrested? Who do you think is getting arrested when this is said and done? What's your prediction? Oh, come on. I mean, listen, Telly, Telly's a supervisor. Oh, right? please, Telly. Please. As a supervisor, he's supposed to direct his troops. He's supposed to he's supposed to overlook the reports that were written. There's no doubt that that Proctor, listen, I'm on tape saying Proctor, you're going to jail. I, I said it. Listen, that taillight, listen, that taillight was planted. There's no, there is app, I there's 
you can they may have experts say dispute the 227 they may have experts dispute the you can't dispute the tail light it is but intact what if, they didn't, what if they didn't even plan it what if what if he just entered in, into evidence with the, why even go to fairview road and, well and well, well we know just enter it into three, evidence and say you got it from Fairview. yeah road. well we know that three pieces went down there we know the other 37 stayed in the in the witch we know that the right. bone they threw to 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 which his name the chief was a was a throw down. It was a gimme. It never left. None of that shit left the state. Left the station. It never. They listen. We right. know cops that were down there. It never. They never went down there. Right. It's, That's what I'm saying. They, they, didn't keep, they didn't keep going down and planted tail. They, 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 just kept it, they put it into and, evidence. And they, I'm going to tell you right now. All right. This is where I taught. I talked about the slippery slope. All right. Now listen about this. Guys who get to that point. All right. I don't know if they were predisposed to be correct. I don't know what they did in their past uh, cases, the past years, but guys that are predisposed to be corrupt, all right? Let's take it one step. They definitely planted evidence, which means they planted the DNA, which means they planted the microscopic uh, the things. Microscopic things right? that, like insane. my buddy Billy Berhaney said, they probably smashed the damn thing and all the, sh all the he's got the clothes. They had the clothes for how long? All the clothes are underneath the, the tail light when they you know smash hard you have to hit a tail light to smash it into yeah, microscopic but, pieces. Right. <laughs> but that's the thing. And you know, listen, it's they never dreamed that that video at Karen's house or John's house existed. Never. Why didn't they delete that? What, Why didn't they delete that? I think they wanted to, but they got confused. Listen, they were under the clock. They needed to do this quickly. They needed to do this quickly because they they had her like thinking that she was guilty. I mean, you know what Jones said? Jones said about uh, about Jen McCabe. You know, I hate to say, you know, because we had this nice little, but I had to bring it up. Jones said that Jen McCabe, when she told that story about, I'm going to get this girl to drink a beer. And she, and this, and Joan, uh, Jen McCabe knew that this girl would refuse. And the girl came in and said, hey, uh, so-and-so, why don't you have a beer? And the girl goes, no, no, I'm just going to drop my, my child and I have to leave. Oh, come on. It's just a beer, just a beer. And so she has the beer. She leaves. See, I can get anyone to do anything. And I guarantee that was why I brought it up. God knows what she instilled in Karen's mind at 545 in the morning when they're driving back and forth from, from uh, her house to John's and John's house to, to what you call to 34 Fairview. And they probably think, OK, we've got her. We've got her where we want, but we don't have the evidence. We, we need evidence. This is what they do. But I'm getting back to my point. You know I, why was Jen awake at 453? That's the, that's what exactly. something no one on the other side can explain. Yeah. Why the fuck was she awake at 453? Right. She never went to bed. That is the most suspicious thing ever. Right. But Aiden, getting back to the predisposed corrupted police officer. Now, just remember this, right? If they're predisposed to be corrupt in one thing, they're predisposed to be corrupt in everything. When you gave your password to that idiot, you think he abided by the law? I'm telling you, he went through every. I'm going to tell you why I know this. They went through your phone like a magnifier. They were going to do that anyway. They were going to do that huh? anyway. They're going to do that huh? with or without the password. They can get in without the password. True. But, but technically speaking, it doesn't matter. They made it. It was, I'm just saying, they didn't have the right at that particular time. Not at that time. You know how I know it? A great source for me found out hours after you were arrested, the word was going around Ken of who were calling you on your show, who was providing information to you on your phone. And this particular source contacted me and I said, source, go to the, the chief Rafferty was blowing the horn on who the sources in Canton were. And one of these sources went to chief Rafferty and confronted the chief. And the chief said, yes. And she, and then she, they had a conversation and she said uh, to, to the source, did you notify Aiden Carney? And the source says, one time, Chief Rad, one time. She says, do you talk to Sean on the Gulf? She says, Sean on the Gulf? You mean Sean McDonough? And, and Rafferty goes, yes. And the source goes, yeah, I talked to Sean five times a day. We've been talking for seven months. That's how, that's how much I talked to Sean McDonough. So trust me, they didn't play by any rules. They made the rules up as they went. And this notion that they're playing, that they're clean, they're not. They they were the – all right, about Brian Higgins. Brian Higgins didn't sign a statement that he had an affair. You tell me a peck on the lips is an affair? 
this bullshit. I don't, like, it doesn't matter. They, right? Notice they haven't shown us exactly what's in those texts. Zero. I heard it's not even bad. I heard it's like a little zero. Who gives zero? Yeah, zero. Hey, listen, I, I've been in I've been in situations where a person you know says goodbye and gives me a kiss. Yeah. When there's booze, hey, everything's. But doesn't mean Look, she's gonna I jump know, in I know a thing or two about nasty text messages. <laughs> You're going through my phone. They're going to see a lot of them. Like yeah. I guarantee whatever was sent between them wouldn't even hold a candle to what's in my right. phone. So, I mean, so me you know, they're, all they're doing is throwing stuff against the wall. You know, oh, this thing about Pico side farm. I'm going to tell you right now, the timeline for Karen to leave <laughs> 34 cool. Fairview and get in at 1241 gives absolutely no time for her to stop and check her light. You know why? Because the, because the video does not, does not exist. They have video. They probably have the car going right by the right by the the, the camera. She didn't, didn't pull into that it, parking it, lot. It, it didn't. The car didn't go down Pleasant Street. Where, where is this coming from? That the car went down Pleasant Street. That's not because Pico Side Farm is on Pleasant Street. So that's if, right. So if, if she went south, every all the witnesses, the McCabe's, they said her car was going that way. Uh, like, but she made a right. South. She made a right on on on. Um, on Chapman went up to wash and made a, a left. I mean, a left, mean a left on Chapman. On, why the a fuck would she go that way? That's so much because further. as a can resident, that's how I would go, and that's no, how you way would go down, you would take a right and then go by the train station. That's the fastest. No, way. I wouldn't do that. that. Right. I would go, I would go to Pleasant Street as a, as a guy that lived there. That's how if I would you, go. But you would, you would go to Pleasant Street if you were going in, if you were going this way, and then you took a right onto Cedar Crest and a right onto Dedham, then you would take Pleasant Street. But if you were going th this way, then it wouldn't make any wow. sense. Right. Like, it's like, do they have evidence, by the way? I mean, where, where are these people getting this shit from about the Pico side farm? What, what the hell is that about? Well, they want to make believe that 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 she stopped to check her light out. She didn't. It's 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 a fo it's 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 a it's a fallacy. It is a fallacy. It's a, it's a hoax. Is. Yeah. yeah, they have no evidence, of course. They're yeah. just trying to explain why the library tape doesn't exist. That's all right. they're trying to do. Is like they're trying to explain away all their bullshit. Yeah. Let me, is this going to trial? Do you think it's going to trial? I, don't, I still say I did five things. Not going to trial. She will be exonerated with prejudice. That they will do a massive sweep. The FBI is going to do a massive sweep. The people uh, will be held accountable, and the, all the corruption will be how? Exposed. How is it not? So that do, do you think Auntie Bev is going to dismiss the charges, or okay, what, how the I, fuck is it not going to trial? There's only two ways this case can be dismissed. Either Mike Morrissey gets up and says, based on other uh, evidence, newly happen. acquired not evidence, no, no, it's happen. not. Because they want the judge to do it. Guess what the judge has? The judge has the TUI process already in her hands, and she's got Alan Jackson's 55 original dismissal in her hand, and he's going to do a supplemental that gives up more. She passed those phones up because guess what? She put, put them down to 10 minutes to discuss because she knows what's in that report. And it didn't take her a heartbeat to, to approve the motions for – so you think she's you think Auntie Bev is going to dismiss a murder indictment? I, it would not. It would not surprise me because of what's what is included that she knows that she knows. I think it's more likely going, that because I here's think, the other thing: if it does go, if it is docketed for trial, I believe the FBI comes in and does their sweep. I don't think this will ever go to trial. I don't think you'll ever have the gavel. I don't think. I don't think Karen will ever get to. To um, can we pull the can we pull the listeners? I'm just curious what people think. Can we do like give me a one in the chat if you think it's going to trial, a two if it's not? Right. Because I, I, I for a long time for a long time I said no, but right. now it's just like I'm getting nervous. Uh, the close. I mean, the long, I, would you know. love, I would love to see it go to trial, but right. I don't. I we don't will. see it will. Okay. We got a lot of ones. A lot of ones. I'm seeing more ones and twos. You see so, it, right? Yeah, I see more. Yeah, so a lot of people seem to think it's going to go to trial. So like. I, well, I, I think the only, I think I, oh, was that it? Whatever. One was no trial, uh, whatever. Yeah. So I think that the way, the only way this doesn't go to trial is the feds have to arrest someone. It doesn't have to be a major arrest. It's gotta be someone though. Maybe they come in and they, they charge Brian Higgins or like somebody like that. They just charge him. And that's what will make it impossible. If a witness yeah. is arrested, if a cop is arrested, I, something. I, I think, I think if they were arrested, I would think they would arrest the uh, structure of the, of the prosecution. I would think they would take out the lead investigator Proctor. for what they have on them. Yeah. And if they, Proctor if they will be lose, the They'll be yeah. the first to be arrested, right? You think? If they lose the lead investigator, right? They lose 
they lose the they lose the investigator who did the case. He can't testify. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, how, yeah. How can they move forward with the? That's what I'm saying. If you arrest Proctor, right. the case right. is dead on arrival. Right. It's like with my case. If you arrest Brian Tully, it's oh, my charges are done. He's the one that fucking right. charged me. You right. know, like right. how can is Michael? How can Michael Proctor testify to anything? It'd be right. And now, and even Auntie Bev would have to dismiss that. That's what I'm saying. Like the feds, when David Yannetti said on January 18th that the feds can't in good conscience allow this to go to trial. What do you think their plan is? How can the feds stop it? From well, okay. Trial? So I'm glad you brought that up. Me personally, from my experience, I have yet, I have yet to hear what caused this guy to have a, his conscience. Nothing that I've heard so far. I have nothing I have heard in, in the hearings have gave me pause to say, well, what the hell did this guy, what did, what happened? Where is the part of his conscience that says he can't let this go to trial? It hasn't come out yet. That's why I believe Tuesday, Tuesday is like the last hope. Tuesday is when Alan Jackson comes in and he gives it up. He goes to town on everything and she's going to have to give it up. She's going to have to allow this to happen. They're going to go. I think that. Yeah. They're going to full, okay. dis, they're going to go the full uh, uh, motion to dismiss the case and the newly acquired, this is great. The newly acquired evidence for the extraordinary governmental misconduct. That will be the linchpin. I believe it was always Morrissey's intent that Bev was going to dismiss this case to begin with. They don't want really? to go to, they don't want, I I thought that yeah. that's because, but here's the thing Jackson and Yanetti never pushed it. They never pushed all the, they could have, listen, they could have put, I've spoken to attorneys, they could have pushed, hey, you haven't given us anything. You know, they could have done all these other motions to say that the that the prosecution is holding up. And there was all kinds of all kinds of reasons why the defense could have like called a foul on the prosecution, but they didn't. Time helps Karen. Look how much we've learned. Time does help Karen. Because of time. Look how much we've mm -hmm. learned. I believe this is all a little violin is orchestrated. They're playing a little chess game. And ultimately, ultimately, I believe it has to be. They're not going to go to trial on April 16th. I, I can tell you that. They're going to have to back it off. But I believe I believe that uh, Jackson comes in and blows the roof off. And the, he's not going to be held to a time limit. He has to be given time to speak. To I, comp I completely agree that it's not going to trial on April 16th. It's funny because I have court date in on April 23rd right. in that same courtroom at I believe nine o'clock. So I don't know how the fuck right. that's going to work too, but I definitely don't think it's going to trial on April 16th. If anything, with this new stuff with the phones, that's going to extend right. until at least yeah. May. And some, th the more time you give the feds, the more, you know, I always ask Karen this. I'm like, do you think that like, how many days a week do you think the feds dedicate to this case? Cause they got other shit going on. Like it's not their only case, but this is a career defining case for josh levy we agree no with doubt. that this this puts him on the map as a national figure if he right. comes this will be the biggest story in the country if it's not already if if indictments come and cops are arrested like it's going to be and i sean i get hard thinking about it like after everything right. that i went through i am going to have the biggest fuck you tour and i know you are too with yeah. all these fucking people who stood by these pieces yeah. of shit yeah <laughs> listen it's it, it, you're right um but like i said uh, they did her dirty. We know. We know it now. We do know. We've always known. The feds, therefore, the feds not being involved. In this she probably would be in jail right now. She would probably yeah. be in jail. The no jail? You don't think her lawyers could have exonerated her based on like a lack of? I think she was going to get acquitted either. I don't think they could ever convict her based on the, the autopsy photos alone. Yeah, uh, true. You know? Well, she it, she wouldn't be out. Right. Yeah, you know something. Maybe that's. Maybe but that's that, not justice. But that Karen no, Reed being acquitted justice, is right. not justice. Right. The people who murdered, this is about John O'Keefe too. The people who murdered John O'Keefe, they need to be held responsible. And we no, can't no forget doubt. about them. No doubt. Absolutely and like, no doubt. Like, how are people like Paul O'Keefe, what are they going to do if the bad guys are arrested? What, what's he going to do? You know, that's, that's the part that, listen, this whole thing that Kevin wants to say that I accuse Paul of being in the conspiracy, that's a bunch of bullshit. All right. I spoke to a cousin of Paul. I'm going to name her because I have to now, Stephanie. Steph Ferrari and I have hundreds, hundreds of conversations about me saying to her, I don't want to see your family, especially Peggy and 
Paul get wrapped up on something that that's going to be mentioned. All right. And all it all surfaced around the car, John's car. Listen, I want to tell you right now, in any murder investigation, you don't wait six days to check a car if it had damage. They waited six days to check out that that uh, Taurus, I mean the uh, Traverse, and the and the garage if Karen maybe hit something coming out. Six days. Now I get I get the part about uh, you know the, the the blizzard and all that stuff. Fine. Come back the next day. Come right back the next day. They were there. They were getting the they were getting John's computers, right? For, and they were getting the uh, information on the uh, ring camera. We know this, okay? Mm -hmm. But check the car out. All right. Maybe the car wasn't there. I don't know for sure, but I'm going to tell you right now. Sources, sources were saying, right, that that car definitely had damage and it got got fixed in time. I don't listen, Kevin. I don't know who brought it there, and I didn't accuse him of being in a conspiracy. But someone brought the car there because that car had some type of transfer evidence on it. And then, you know what the you know what the simple thing was that I told her. I said, listen. This is Stephanie. I got all the texts. She's got all the texts. I actually talked to her mother. I actually talked to her mother. It's a distant relationship, but they got, they were sending messages to Paul. Paul was sending messages back to me. And his big thing was, well, I don't, I don't talk to turtle riders, right? Fine, Paul. I, you know, I, I, if, if you're listening, me and Aiden are not really getting along, right? Back in that time. It was back in that yeah. time. Yeah, but so, when I talked to Paul, he seems like there was part of him, even Carl, when I talked to him, part of them were like, they were like, I'm happy the FBI is investigating. Right. Which means oh. like they weren't 100% sold. Right. Yeah, like, listen. They be? Right. But they just I don't, don't know. like me and they don't like Karen. They especially don't like Karen. Like they're right. just, they're like, she's a bitch. Like she's a cunt fucker. They want Karen Reed to be guilty. And so they've talked yeah. themselves into that. And, and it's right. just like, I got bad news for him. Like, she's not like, she's not guilty. Yeah. She's not going down. And the people that you're showing up with the court, like are the people who murdered, like, it's disgusting to watch Jennifer McCabe walk in with Paul O'Keefe. It fucking offends no, me no. so badly because of what she did to her, to his brother, you know, that right. his brother was dying. And instead of calling an ambulance, she Googled right. how long to die in cold waiting. Just like, how long do we have to this motherfucker just dies and can't talk again and can't tell right. us about what happened inside the house. But I don't right. know. It's like, are the people who actually murdered him ever going to be held responsible? I believe they will. Because if you looked at that, it wasn't in the motion to dismiss. It was in the motion to sanction. At, it was at the top paragraph, and a lot of people misread this. They say that Yanetti's, I think it's Yanetti's, it was Yanetti's. He goes, we have a civilian witness. All right. That was key. The civilian witness phone puts John's phone in the house. All right. Puts John's phone in the house. I, I got the document. Olivia yeah, has that. Yeah. But I so think that was something. Yeah. That was that something. Was that was, was them huge. talking. That was them talking about John's phone going up and down the stairs. That's what they no, were talking. No, it was about something that. else. It was some. It was actually something else. All right, because he you know, he not only said about John being in the house, he also said that this witness also says that people people in the house and law enforcement and a mass state trooper covered this up. He's he's linking in that paragraph. See, was hidden. Because it was about the sanctions. It wasn't about the motion to dismiss. In the motion to dismiss, I believe it's all there. She limited, she limited poor, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jackson. Listen, uh, Aiden, it takes an attorney 20 minutes to tell you what their name is. You give an attorney 10 minutes to give bombshell stuff. You just you cut the you just cut their throat. So he picked and chose because they they know what's in, the, she knows what's in that motion to dismiss. All right. Mm -hmm. um, real yeah, quick. All right. Been. So, you know, Carl, Carl Dougal, Dugal, whatever. So Dan Duquette always asked me, he says, Sean, why isn't Aiden jumping all over Carl Dugal about this, this connection between Carl and Brian Albert? I said, that's a great question. And because we do know that Carl buried the information, they went down to the detective station there downtown, right? 1A, look at the damn thing. 1A, uh, do you see that thumb? I did see the thumb. Yeah, what's happening? Yeah. How, how, does I that? don't know. I put my thumb on the, oh. the shit happens. Oh, that, oh, that, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, and he said, Dan Duquette says, this is something that Aiden could put together between Dugal 
and Brian Albert. This is this is in their this is in their uh, their motion because of what happened uh, at the hearing that, that this uh, this uh, uh, deposition that went south on Nikki's wife and this other attorney. The attorney actually jumped and and, and attacked Nikki's wife. This is this is crazy stuff. I mean, Kyle read Dugo it. has really been silent on this. I think that Carl Dougal genuinely likes John O'Keefe and that he genuinely considered him a friend, but he's just such a cuck that like he, the only reason he thinks Karen did it is because she didn't call him back that day. Like that. She wasn't concerned. She didn't call to check up on him. I don't think, I think Carl genuinely liked John and considers him a friend and wants justice for him. He just, right. He's just a fucking idiot. Like he's just fucking, he's a stubborn douchebag who can't admit that he was wrong. Cause this is embarrassing to admit you're wrong at this point that you've right. broken bread with John's killers. That's embarrassing. And they'd rather yeah. the Karen Reed do it. Did it. You would think as a detective, right. As a Boston police detective, right. Knowing that his friend was murdered, that he would take a keen interest in the evidence like I have. Right. I was a crime scene investigator, right? I did stuff like that, right? He's a detective. You would think he would take a keen uh, interest in how this evidence was presented, right? How it's it yeah. literally is tainted, right? Yeah. Why, as a as a Boston police officer, good friend, Don O'Keefe, right? Why isn't he taking more of an interest? All he wants to talk about is why Karen made these statements. That's the key. They all want to focus on the statements she made at six yeah. thirty in the morning on the 29th. Mean shit, which is hearsay right. and means, means nothing. Shit. Yeah, it means absolutely nothing. That's the best they have is just like right. some angry text messages, a trip to Aruba in which she got right. mad at them. It's right. just like they got nothing. They just got emotions. Like none of that actually proved. You know, if if you get in a fight with your wife or something like that and she dies, you. <laughs> They go through your phone. They're gonna be like, "Did you kill this motherfucker? Why? Just because right. I was mad at them? People get mad at each right. other. It should right. happen, right. you know." And it's like you should see a... my phone. You you go on my phone. My my wife's going to jail forever. I, <laughs> I but uh, we you're you're not even kidding though. It's true. It's like if that's no, what, if true. that's all it takes to convict somebody is some angry text messages. Like we all have that. We all get pissed. Right. And Karen had a right to be pissed that night at John. You know what yeah. I mean? Like right. John. Uh, like well, no, no, not not John. Like if John had actually not. If, if John was alive, I'm saying, if John right. was alive and had just not come home that night, of course she had a right to be fucking pissed at Of him. course, but of he's course. He's fucking dead. Like, unbeknownst to her, she's, he's right. fucking dead. Right. So that's exactly. not, you know, it's like, give me a break. No, that's true. Yeah. So, but it's um, like, I just, I just really hope that these fucking assholes go down. It needs to happen sooner rather than later because I, I hate living with this cloud over my head, over these charges and shit. And I hate that Karen has to live with it. And more than anything, Karen's dad, who has lost a significant amount of weight during this whole thing, I think yeah. he's, as a father, right. you know what I mean? It's just like watching your daughter go through this. It's fucking hell. And no. it just needs to end. And um, do you think Gemma Cabe shows up at the next hearing? If it's going to, because it's probably going to be explosive. Yeah, I think, explosive. you know, I think the fact that, you know, that she's going to use the shield with uh, your, the other person. We yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah. That's going to be their thing, you know. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. let's face it. But she and, didn't show uh, up at the one before that. Like she didn't show right. up at, at the one True. the ep where the, all the the damning shit came out. She it was like right. it was like she knew that yeah. some shit was going to come out there. Right. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that that she knew that night that this was going to be broadcasted. That the 227 is confirmed. It's confirmed because so here's wonder, the other thing: yeah. the, the the FBI and Celebrite. I like this. They joined at the hip, right? That specialist that works in Quantico is joined at the hip. I don't care if the if they want to put the guy, the man in the moon on for, for Celebrite. It doesn't matter. That 227 search absolutely happened. And the 220, the 623 and the 624, they have they have the forensic data and they will be able to show it. But the problem is, can a jury process to listen, I, I know myself by sitting in the jury, uh, sitting in the table, at the prosecutor's table, knowing my own case. When you hear defense attorneys attack your case, your evidence, and you see the prosecutor, I get sometimes confused, or I got confused. These poor jurors, they have they're laymen, they're lay people. They got to figure out what's right. But I still believe that the hanging, the 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 the, 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 the linchpin in this whole case is that taillight. And that was my little baby, right? 
We know what happened. We know the five undocumented searches were for a reason. February 18th was the last last piece of evidence. So you got January 29th, and the evidence is put in February February 18th. Yeah, this is bull, bull. That, you know what I think? The, the two the two strongest pieces of evidence, in my opinion, the linchpins yeah. are human beings, Lucky Locker sure. and Ryan Nagel. Those sure. are the two. Those are the two that right. put John O'Keefe inside that house right. because Absolutely. Lucky Lochran didn't just say he didn't see a body. He said that he would have seen a body had a body been there. He told that right. to me, the private investigator, the FBI, and the state police. He got the same exactly. story every single time. And, he's going, to, And they act like he's retarded. Like they, they, That's their new defense. Well, Lucky's just retarded. Right. It's like, no, no, Lucky is a... He's he is he takes his craft seriously, right? Plowing like he took pride, in, you know. And so I think an eyewit eyewitness accounts are better than anything. The old like him and Ryan Nagel is the best fucking witness. Like Ryan Nagel, he wasn't inside the car, he wasn't outside the car. The tail light was fully intact. So where the fuck was he? It's just like those two put John inside that house more than anything. No doubt. And when you get back to Lucky, right? About his craft, his trade. You've seen those big those big snowplows. They got the halogen lights. It lights up like like you're mm. on the moon, like it's daylight. And there was a girl that did I forget her name now. She's very nice. She back. She was went into the driveway at when it was dark. Backed out and went to her lights. Go to there. It lights up that area. You would never miss a body at never. that. I don't give a what time. How it about was. the Ford Edge? How about the Ford right. Edge? Like that's that was all the whole time I was being arrested. The whole time I'm just like. They they put all this fucking effort into little old me and my YouTube show, and they watched right. hundreds of hours on me, and they're not looking for that footage, and they don't that's, give a fuck yeah. how it looks. And that's why when I yeah. got out of that car, like the I, I knew I'd have 10, 15 seconds to say something. So I'm just going to talk about the Ford Edge because I'm going to be like, contrast that, right. contrast what they're doing with me to what they should be doing. And I wanted the reporters to ask me about the Ford Edge when I came out of the courthouse, and they right. did. They're like, what were you talking about with that Ford Edge? I'm like, let's talk about the Ford Edge that right. all these at make Albert's drive and why they're like, uh, it was the last vehicle seen before a body right. of a dead cop was discovered. There should right. be an all points freaking bulletin for the driver of that right. Ford edge, but they know who drove the Ford edge. And so does right. the FBI. So they do. So one of the tips that I got, I one on the, one of the rare occasions I literally spoke to Alan Jackson was I had a source that said, Sean, you got to have someone survey Kevin Albert's street because we know that Kevin Albert left the house at 2, 2.15 in the morning, all right? And he came back around 6. How do we and know that? How do we know that for sure? Source told me, and there's video, there was video of it. Now, the guy wasn't going to, he wasn't going to give up the source. I know for sure that that street, that, um, that area where Kevin lives, he's got a tan Ford Edge. Yes, he does. And yeah. and, <laughs> and that's and the color I Lucky know. said. That's the color Lucky said, too. I do know that that – I know houses were definitely spoken to. I know – I, I know they were, too. I think yeah. we know we have the and same so, – And, and I'll that. tell you another thing. Why would – what would make a sergeant of – now they say 19 and a half years – break down crying, crisp, talking to a person – Right, his wife is crying at all these soccer events, or uh, I don't know, baseball, softball. I don't know, crying. Something is going on. He's listen. He's not a hardo. He's not. Look at him. He's no hardo. He, he's a cop in Canton. Right, it's the best paying job. You don't do shit there, and they get all kinds of money. All kinds of money. I would love that job. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Sit there and do nothing. He does right? CrossFit with Proctor. Remember, I found that picture of them doing that. That's the connection. People are always like, where's the connection? It's like they do yeah. fucking CrossFit together. Right. These people all right. know each other. Give me and, a break. And the thing, and the and the thing, that same source also called me and said, he his other source, which was beautiful. You know how um how uh what's his name? Morrissey came out and gave the big video speech for right. three weeks in a row, led by Chris Albert. And I this is this is double sourced. Chris Albert went in demanding, demanding that the pro that uh, Morrissey make a statement. It, it got so bad that Morrissey yelled at them and said, "You guys make the statement. I'm the DA. I cannot do that. That's not ethical. It's not ethical." He's fucking screaming. Guess who won? Guess who did the statement? So who, who, who's the one who, 
Who's the one that forced him? To Chris do it? Albert oh. and the McAlberts went Come in on. numerous times to force the DA. Right now, I don't know why he succumbed, but he was right. It was not an ethic. It, it's going to blow up in his face. It is, but it was not an ethical statement to make. And oh, of course, the, not. the source is right on the money. Right on the money. He lied. He said that the proctor doesn't know any of the witnesses in the case. Right. That's been proven to be a lie. Right. Proven. So please, please do me a favor. All right. This is one more thing. Right. And okay. I don't think it's been, you did, you broke the story on the, uh, the daughter of the judge, right. That was, that they were. all right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who was the trooper that bucked the system? Ryan Skivior. He's from Canton. Right. Yeah. He's a Canton cop. He oh, told no, he's, he's a state trooper. He's a state trooper. Right. But he was originally a Canton cop. Okay. Okay. And he, and, and, and he became the state trooper and he got, so, They've been messing with him, obviously. That's what happens, right? You you buck the system, you win a suit, you're going to get all the shit. He made a statement. And this is and when I heard uh, Alan Jackson talk about pool parties, he said Proc Proctor should have definitely recused himself because me and Proctor and other cops have went into Brian Albert's house many times for pool parties, for drinks, because all cops hang together. And when you're in Canton and you have all this law enforcement, he basically told this trooper who told another source of mine. So he's, and he's, a, listen, he's a good guy. He, he and, uh, we have a friend in common that calls him Frenchy. It was his, uh, it was his training officer. I could, I can't say, I can't say the guy's name to save my life, but I know him as Frenchy. That was his nickname from his, his field training officer in Canton. Guy's a st stand up guy. So. Anyways, I mean, this has been a duck since day one. I told you on your show, this has been a duck from day one. This was a, we said it way back in June, way back in June. Look how far we've come. Yeah. I mean, well, it's just so an east end. Though. It's just like this going on. When I was in jail, I'm like, well, by the time I'm out of here, it's going to be taken care of. Yeah. And it just, I mean, big news came on the J January 18th and then kind of nothing. They said two weeks and then it's just like, come on, feds, let's fucking go. You know, and I just yeah. wonder when that day is going to come because that's going to be a great day. We're all we. It's got to yeah. come sometime. They're not right. investing this much time in something, no. and then nothing comes out of it. It's not going to no. happen. Period. Exactly, right. So, so now the word is that uh, Chris Albert has moved out of Canton. Stoughton, he I heard he's, in, the, yeah. he's, he's in, in Stoughton now. That's right. right. I've I've got yeah. his address. I've got his. Doesn't address. want to be. Doesn't want to be in Canton because he doesn't want to be on the board. Conley said you got to stay in the board because if you leave, they're going to get your seat. Listen. This is this is where it all probably happens. Can't afford it. He probably can't. He's poor. Chris Albert has no money. Like he lives paycheck to paycheck, and I guarantee something's going on inside D and E Pizza because they ain't. He's not paying his bills with chick with chick mediocre chicken parms. Some cash is going into that business. I guarantee you something's going on. Shady. Yeah. I got no well, proof of it, but listen, I bet you something is. Listen, I mean, it was known forever, yeah. and I don't want I don't want to crucify the kid, right? It's been known forever. Bookmaking going out of there. You want to put your, I don't, listen, that's not my thing. Bookmaking, maybe a little blow going out of there. Who knows? It's just talk. But, you know, just tell the truth, Chris. Tell the truth. No one's yeah. telling you to change your story. Just tell the truth, you know? Yep. I mean, it's just I too mean, bad. I mean, that's the thing. It's like he's just such a little whiny bitch. And when I, when I left the courtroom, uh, you know, when I was there on the 26th and I obviously had to leave and I walked out and he's got this big smile. He's like, that's a bitch, huh? It's like, fuck you, Chris. Right. I cannot wait till this goes down. You fucking yeah, yeah. shit. He's such a cunt. Yeah. <laughs> such I a mean, cunt. Yeah. He is. I hate Anyways. Um, well, I, I'm really look to be said, I'm going to be honest with you. I was not really, I was expecting some bombs on the last, on the last hearing. I was a little, mm -hmm. but I do believe now, Analyzing, I do believe it was a chess game. Yanetti mm -hmm. likes to play chess. He really does, right? Interesting was Berkowitz did not contest his part of the thing, right? Uh, it's really that's you know that that says something. But now she's giving it all up. All this stuff is gonna matter. And listen, how about how about what's his name? Brian Albert, a, a, a seasoned so-called you know hard old cop, using a lame excuse. Of a butt down having an yeah. intimate moment with well, his wife. Well, on my show tonight, that's what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to recreate Brian Albert 
fucking his wife and see if I can butt. I've got it. I've entered somebody in my phone as Higgins and we're going to try if I can Siri butt dial too. We're going to try all sorts of things to see if this is legit. Yeah. I mean, and, and I, I'll give, um, I'll give Will the glare a, a great 22 seconds is an eternity to talk. Right. Absolutely. I could talk, listen, nine, nine seconds was perfect for Jen to tell her sister, whatever the hell she said, are you going to come out and help? Are you going to fucking come out? Whatever the hell, nine seconds, all it took. Imagine what 22 seconds is. Hey, Brian, uh, uh, can you come back? Listen, he was either at the station or he was in West Roxbury. Uh, a, a woman told me that he was had a stash house, a flop house in West Roxbury. That's right down the street. He could have come back at any time. Somebody put that body up, helped, helped um, Brian Albert put that body up. He had to right. have some help. Right? He's not doing it himself. Yeah. Right. So Fuck I mean, that. so uh well, yeah. how do you feel, well, lady? What's going on? I feel on? good. Feel I feel good. good. I, you know, I, I feel like I said, I like I like your optimism, and that's why yeah. I really enjoy what you do on Twitter. Uh, because right. sometimes again I get frustrated and you're always optimistic about like right. it's gonna happen. So I really enjoy that. I think it's just right. I like to I like optimism. Right. And the thing is, I mean. I don't know what I'm doing here on this thing. I'm just trying to give a voice. I'm going down the corruption angle. I've got some serious, serious guests lined up uh, for some future shows. and But I will never, ever abandon this story because this story is the top-rated corrupted act of all time. I'm going to tell totally. you, of all time. Of all time. And uh, I really I want to get justice so badly for John O'Keefe, Officer John O'Keefe, and I want to do as much as I can to help out with the little voice that I have, right? If I can make it that I can go on live, Aiden, you there? Oh, there you are. I'm, I'm still here, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I thought you froze. I, if I can make it go live with, with my microphone on and get myself on the screen, that's it. I know I'm, I know I'm going to be effective one way or the other. Absolutely, so, absolutely. Anyways, well, um, just be careful out there because they're not going to stop hunting. They're not. No, I'm not. That's why I'm not going to the hearings. It's just like, I'm not. Yeah. It's, it's not, not worth back. it. It's, it's not, not worth it. Not. You got, not. listen, you got Paul Cristoforo, that crew. Listen, it's a well-oiled machine. Everyone stepped mm -hmm. up. Everybody. Look, right. at, look at the content creators that stepped up. Right. Totally. But the other thing is, and I, you know, I analyze things. I'm, I, that's my game. You have these other people in the country taking on this case. They don't know shit about this case. No one knows, and they're getting it wrong completely. Yeah, core, core TV every time. It's oh, like they don't God. research anything. So bad. Nothing. Yeah, and they're they're the, they're the so-called experts. Their experts are crazy. They they don't know anything about this case. That nothing. Jewelry, nobody they, nobody does any fucking research before coming no, on the show. It's no. just remarkable. It's remarkable. But I do know. I do know deep down that Vinny is in our camp. There's no doubt about it. He's Absolutely. definitely in our camp. There's no doubt. Listen, he's got to play the game. He's got to play the game, right? Now, yeah. It's, it's a show. He's got to play the game. But I know I know for a fact he's definitely in our camp. He, he actually broadcasted it when he, they were doing the uh, video for uh, John uh, Karen backing out on John's uh, property there. He basically, he did tip his hand right back then, way back then. So, yeah. anyway. So um, anyway, well, I gotta go. I gotta go get I ready for my shindig. But thank you for having know, me, Sean. Really great. Thought listen, this was productive. We're gonna be fine. And listen, good luck. Good luck. Listen, I good luck with everything you got going. And um, yeah, and we'll be we'll be in touch. Okay. All right. We'll do, Sean. Thanks for having me. Okay, guys. Bye bye. Bye. All right, there it is. Um, I think it went fine. Uh, you guys tell me. Um, Listen, we are all we're all in heightened alert right now. We're we're stressed out. We're in this. We feel bad. We we are really hoping for the best here. All right, and uh, you know I will apologize again. I lost my cool. All right, I was, but I do think it's interesting that Nikki and Dan um, Duquette have a relationship with Aiden's attorney. And it just it just basically confused me. So um I guess with that, uh I want to see Aiden's show. I think I think we did something here today. I just hope that, you know, from this point forward, we don't have any more dust ups. I don't like dust ups. 
I, even though I, I kind of, I kind of enjoy engaging, uh, I really don't like the dust ups. I don't. I prefer to have like something like this because I think, I think Aiden and I are more effective talking about our facts and talking about our theories than you know listening to the noise. So um, I hope you guys. Uh, well, I started out the show with uh, hot chocolate. They had two hits. They had uh, believe in miracles. But anyways, uh, you know, everyone's a winner. I hope that we won tonight. I hope that the other side maybe sees some kind of unity. But we can't We can't do this. Melissa, that's right. Stand united. And that's true. I can't work this thing and talk at the same time. I thought my mods could do something for me. But I think uh, I think everyone was in a pretty good, uh, pretty good mood tonight. Um, so listen, what I will say, I do have uh, some good guests lined up. I got some great guests lined up. I just want to get to them and um, stay in there. I guess you can all go over to Aiden's show right now. And uh, like I said, this was not hard to do. We're both adults. We both have the same goal, right? We just, we, we, like he, his, he does his thing. I do mine, right? But somehow we get to the center and we come together. And I think I think our problem should have been aired out a lot earlier because a lot of leftover feelings uh, got carried out, and obviously we both went at each other, and was it was wrong. It was wrong on my part, and I apologize to all you people because it was wrong. I I was not professional, um, and I'll take responsibility. I've always listen. I'll always take responsibility, right? But this thing that Kevin Lenahan did last night was completely wrong. He tarnished, he tarnished the reputation of a good woman. She was honest, all right? And he got his crew spun up, right? Because he's smart like that. Don't think he's not smart. He's very smart. And he does have a relationship with Chris Albert. I know he does because I got guys right in Canton that tell me. And Chris is going to be very surprised when he finds out who I have. Right? I hope it never gets to that point. But I do have sources right there. So uh, anyways, we've been on what? Uh, almost an hour and a half. It's fine. I just hope, uh, I don't know when I'm going to be coming on again. I do I do believe that Tuesday will be a very, very good day uh, in this in this saga with uh, Karen versus the Commonwealth. And um, yeah, you know, so, okay. So Scott, you're right. Let, let me get this thing. All right. Let me get this right. I, I, I do need to address this. Scott, listen, I respect you, Scott, right? And I guess, yeah. Okay, so you're right. All right, I will I will apologize to Nick. All right, um, I'm not going to get into it. I think Nick and Jenna have done a uh, an absolute phenomenal job in their fundraising abilities for Karen Reed. Okay, uh, there was a thing, and that's it. I'm not all I'm going to say. There was a thing, and uh, it got tied up with the Aiden thing and my thing with Aiden. And I um, just listen, Nick. I'm sorry. All right. Um, I think I sent a message to one of your friends uh, we have in common that we're good. Uh, I took it down, and uh, I hope we can move on. Right. You're a tough kid. I'm a tough guy, and uh, I just want to give tip my hat to both you and Jenna for all the work you did, and I and and you continue to do. So yes, yeah, Scott. I'm glad you. I'm glad we had time to do this, and I'm glad that you brought that up. And um, that's my other apology. So I will always, always admit when I'm wrong, right? And uh, if I'm wrong on all of this, then I'll admit it. But I did not. I did not accuse Paul of being in the conspiracy, right? I have hundreds of text messages with his cousin, knowing that I wanted to defend him and his family, that I did not like what was going on, right? I've got the, if you want to call it receipts, I got the receipts. He knows it. I talked to his friends. They were going to go out for me on his behalf, all right? The easy fix was get the car tested. It takes five minutes. I talked to uh, Justin D'Ambrosio or uh, Justin, whatever his name is, Justin, uh, Jay Burke, help me out. Justin Ambrosio, or whatever his name is. He's a car guy. It takes two minutes to uh, to figure out 
what the paint is. That's it. If it wasn't touched, and that's it. Why haven't you done it? Clear it up. That's it. All right. It's a thing that's hanging over. But it's not, it's not because of them. It's because of the cops. It's the cops. Six days. Is it? It's not acceptable. It's a murder to investigate. It's your family member dead on the lawn. O'Keefe's, you deserved a better investigation. I'm sorry. You got railroaded by these half half asses, right? They're half asses, and it's going to come out. It is going to come out. It's going to all going to come out, right? And I just feel bad. But check with your little cousin, Jen, whatever, uh, not Jen, Steph Ferrari. That's her name. I have them all. Check with them. And you were wrong, Kevin, to attack Joan. Uh, Kavanaugh is her name. She was excellent. And she told the truth. And she and she bled her heart out. And Kevin, I'm really surprised. I'm so surprised that you would actually take a shot at one of my guests. All right. And you were wrong. But anyways, Nick, I'm sorry. I hope you accept my apology. And uh, that's how we do it. So Linda, thank you. I got a Linda gave me a beautiful shirt. I hope I hope it's you, Linda. I, I, I didn't confirm, but whoever sent me this. Oh, let me one more thing. Hold on, let me see some. Where's my phone? All right, I gotta check my gotta check my donors. Hold on. Uh, cash app. No, I don't have anything cash app. Uh, super chats. No, I don't have anything super chats. Uh, what's what's the other thing? Venmo, uh, uh, whatever, Bank of Boston. No, I don't have anything. Um, and merch. I don't have a merch. Uh, this was gifted to me. Uh, another shirt I paid for. I don't have any merch. I don't have a PR team. Olivia now and I talk every day. We're not a part of any PR team. She is absolutely incredible. Uh, we have a great team of mods. I have a great team of mods in the uh, corruption page. I don't know what more I have to say to put this to bed, right? I don't want a penny, all right? Because I can sit here, I can tell my truth, and just be assured, you 5,000 people out there are going to get truth from me, right? You're not going to get it from that other guy. But I'm going to take a side, all right? I have the creds to take a side, right? Because I've done the job. I didn't put fucking martinis, uh, give martinis or balls and beers to drunks all day in my life. I did the absolute job. Breathe. Uh, one of my moms said, breathe. I'm getting red. Yeah, that's, you know why? Because I get pissed. I get emotional, right? This means something to me. It does. And they can clip all they want. They can do it all. Clip it, put it on. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Sue me. Sue me. I don't care. I got nothing to give you. But you know what I do have? I got discovery. I have dep depositions and I know how they work. I've been in many of them. So come and sue me. I'm right here. Uh, I'm not giving you my address, but it's all out there because Rogie Rogue has it. It doesn't matter. But all right, I'm rambling. I'm, I've lost my, uh, I've lost my, uh, listen, I don't know who this uh, angel is. Angels, uh, waiting on angels. Whoa, we got to figure out. But listen, Jules, stop it. You, you've, you've made a mockery of yourself. D don't try to investigate me and Skip Tracer, come on, you know what your family background is. Don't make me go there, Skippy. You know, Speed Racer, I don't know what it's your Speed Racer or Skip Tracer. Buddy, do all the foyers you want. I'm, I'm glad you got my uh, DUI arrest. I was actually looking for that, that report. You're really good. Don't make me come after your family because I know what your father did. Stop it before I come out with my truth. Anyways, that's it. I'll leave you guys hanging with another little thought before we come back. So be good. Take care. And listen, just remember, we're all in this together, all of us, even the other side, all right? Even the other side, right? This is, this is no joke. People's lives are at stake here, and we got to come to the truth. So I hope you're all well. It's a, it's a Sunday night. We start the week off tomorrow. Tuesday is another hearing. So give your support where it belongs, and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you, everyone. Be good.